good morning and happy monday guys i am now on the second week of my um subspecialty pediatric rotation this week i am doing um cardiology and nephrology just got to the cardiology um center it was like an over an hour commute but i'm running a little bit late so i'll talk to you guys after so i have never been pimped this much by an attending in my life <laughs> like Pimping is just being asked multiple questions. Um, and this is a pediatric cardiologist. So as soon as I got in the office, you know, he pulls out a white sheet of paper, he draws the heart, all the chambers, and then he makes me like go through the pathophys of it and which I'm able to do. And after that, he's asking me about um, the pressures in each chamber. And I'm just like, you know, I don't know. Um, I'm on lunch break, by the way, so I'm in my car. Um, then after that, yeah, we just continue to talk about different um, congenital heart anomalies, different murmurs and things like that. And then one patient that we're seeing had a PDA, that's a patent of arteriosis, and that's when like blood flows from your aorta to the pulmonary artery, which is not supposed to do. Um, so, you know, he just started asking me questions about that, like what congenital um, infection is this associated with, which is um, rub rubella. And then... Um, Typically, I'm used to like one to two follow-up questions. He has about four to five follow-up questions. Then he asks, um, you know, what's the head size associated with that, which is microcephaly. Then like, what's the eye finding, which is cataracts. And then, you know, what other findings can you have in rubella, which is like jaundice and um, hearing impairment. So, you know, I was good with rubella. Um, then we get to EKGs. Um, it, the EKG topic is really good because this is obviously something I need to know for emergency medicine. So we touched on some topics with EKG and different findings that you have. And then he has this thick textbook sitting on his desk and he's just telling me to read different sections. Then after I'm done reading each section, he's quizzing me on what I just read. So he's definitely keeping me on my toes. Um, being pimped this excessively is is annoying but um at the end of the day i am learning a lot from um this this visit but i reached the point in like my med school career where if i don't know the answer to the question my answer is i don't know like i'm not gonna try to fumble through or sit in silence while i try to think of something or act like i'm thinking of something maybe at the beginning of third year but at this point it's just i don't know then you can teach me whatever topic you're trying to teach me then we can build on it from there and it is okay not to know you know medicine there's a lot to know a lot to learn so you're not always going to have the answers but the good thing is that when you get something wrong i feel like that helps you learn better and it sticks in your mind better you can go home and read on it later so yes third year fourth year you're always going to be asked multiple things but just always take it as a learning experience so i had a one hour lunch break um still have about 30 minutes left so i'm just about to head back into the break room so I came home, um, took a nap, just now waking up. It's about six o'clock, but I'm about to do some CS cases. Um, so I have two more weeks of this rotation, and then a week following that after this rotation ends is when I take um, step two CS. And so I've been going through this book, which has 44 cases. And by the time I take the exam, I wanna get through all 44. Um, so it's best to do this with a partner and actually like simulate um, the case. That's the best way to practice. Right now, I'm just going through them on my own. And then prior to the actual exam, I will make sure I get through a chunk of these um, with a partner. Another good way to practice with this is to actually read the patient encounter. And from there, write up your own note. Use the 10 minutes that they allot to write up your own note. And then just read the note in here to see, you know, how good you're doing. So for the rest of the evening, I'm going to get through um, three cases and then knock out some euro questions. I have 20 on my schedule um, to do tonight. Like we have, we have several half days mixed in, 
off days makes it like tomorrow I'm off so that really allows you the opportunity to get some studying done. But yeah, today's lecture is like on diarrhea, constipation, and vomiting. I believe it's only one lecture, so it should end pretty early. So I just got home to a package from Purple Carrot. So I have to thank Purple Carrot for sponsoring today's video. So if you guys have been watching my vlogs for a while now, I think you know how much I love um, meal kit delivery services, simply for the convenience and the options they give you, the healthy options they give you for, um, you know, foods and different recipes. And what's so cool about Purple Carrot is that they're a fun and creative um, plant-based um, meal kit delivery service. So I know for me, I love my meat, but I always try to find ways to um, have plants, fruits, and veggies in my meals. And I always look at, you know, vegans and people that eat plant-based and I'm like, you know, what kind of meals do you eat? What can you really create? For me, it's difficult creating those plant-based meals. But, you know, uh, Purple Carrot takes all the guesswork out for you. They create the vegan meals, they create the plant-based meals they send all the ingredients to your doorstep so you know you just go to their website you pick out the meals that you want I got the three meals per week plan and they deliver it weekly to you you know you definitely don't have to be strictly plant-based to even you know try this kind of meal kit uh, delivery service sometimes you just want to switch it up and have something else in your diet you know add something else to your menu and this is definitely a good option to give you fun and creative meals all right, so these are all the ingredients for the three recipes that I got for this week. Um, you got barbecue lettuce wraps, roasted sweet potatoes, which are gluten-free, and then New England uh, lobster rolls. And then with that, they also give you a menu for um, this week. I uh, also got that, the lettuce wraps. And then this is the roasted sweet potatoes, which I got as well. All right, so for today, I'm gonna go with the lobster rolls and the cook time for this is 30 minutes. the picture and here is the final product with the potato wedges I've actually never had lobster rolls, so it'll be interesting to compare what um, the vegan one tastes like versus, you know, actual lobster. So I'm gonna give that meal a solid eight out of 10. I uh, really enjoyed it. And if you guys are interested in trying out Purple Carrot, you can use the code white coat and that'll save you $30 off your first order. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the vlog right here. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.